Paul was one of the most faithful servants of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he had three motivations behind that faithfulness. He had hope of eternal life. He had love for Jesus. But he had a third motivation for his faithfulness. And that was this fear of God, this reverential fear, because he knew that he would stand before the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ. But what is missing in the church of Jesus Christ in these last days is that third motivation, that reverential fear, that awesome sense that I will stand one day and give an account of every motive, every deed, every thought, everything I've done and said, I've got to answer. I've got to stand before a holy God. Beloved, we're very soon going to stand before the judge of the universe, before his throne. It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Paul said, for we must all appear. We shall appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Now, a day is soon coming when every person who's ever been born on the face of the earth, from Adam on, will be called out of their graves to stand before him. The kings of the earth, the great men, the rich, the chief captains, the mighty men, every bondman, every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. And these reapers are going to go out at the command of the Lord Jesus and say it's judgment day. Bring them to the judgment. What a day of terror that's going to be. There will be no other afterlife other than that eternal damnation for those who have rejected him. The Bible said the angel of the Lord will gather the tares, gather the wicked. The Bible said they'll not come willingly. They're going to come wailing, weeping, and gnashing their teeth. God has been keeping books on every living soul since Adam. He's recorded every word, every passion, every motive, every single thought, every action, every deed. The book of life. And on that day, he's going to remember all who are in that book. They shall be mine, saith the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that served him. If you love Jesus this morning with all your heart, if you're washed in the blood of the Lamb, your name is written in this book of remembrance. God said, I'll mark you in that book. Your name is written in that book. And you need not fear this message. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to to their works. The wicked, the ungodly, the sinner is judged out of everything that's written in those books. There are those who stand before this judge who neglected their salvation. They're in great shock because they don't believe they should be standing here numbered with transgressors. These are those who will say, well, Lord, I went to church, I paid tithe. Lord, I wasn't bad. I did so many good works. And the answer will be, all your works is filthy rags in my sight. There would be those who say, we've cast out devils, we've healed the sick, we did mighty works in your name. And the Lord said, I don't even know you. You're a worker of iniquity. The angel of the Lord will say, you gave no earnest heed to the things which you heard. You let the word of God slip away from you. How do you hope to escape, seeing that you've neglected so great a salvation, which was so clearly confirmed and revealed to you? This judge is faithful. And he will call his witnesses. And the first witness will be the very word of God itself. The Bible says, He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that will judge him. The word that I have spoken shall judge him on that last day. The word that I have spoken. Beloved, everyone who stands before the judge must answer for every message they've ever heard every scripture verse they've ever heard every song that had a line of scripture in it 
every radio program, every television program, every word Jesus said, the word that I have given you, that will judge you on that day. The men of Nineveh, Tyre and Sidon, these cities that were destroyed, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes if they had a fraction of the warnings that you and I have had. Perhaps the most tragic soul standing before the judge will be those God calls unprofitable servants. These are servants. That means that they call themselves by the name of Jesus. All the multitudes of unprofitable servants. Servants. These are the servants who hide their talents, too lazy to invest their life and time in God's interest. Cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When you stand before the judge, and he begins to talk about your lack of interest in his work and your focus on your own life, your own interest, and all the time that you have spent for yourself, even at the neglect of your children, let me show you what is left. You spent your time and your life and I warned you and told you that it's all grass that would burn in a fire. Your heart's not with me, it's never been with me. Long, long ago you left your first love. You had no place that was not really planted in your heart. I'm not the lover of your soul. Who are those that stand before the judge that are going to have boldness and confidence and joy exceedingly abundant? And he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto those on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. The scripture says, And now my little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. That we may have boldness on the day of judgment. Now test yourself to see if you're going to stand before the judge of all the earth with boldness and confidence and singing in your soul.